Hey, it's Erin. I'm excited because today we're going to take a break from the usual training videos and we're going to hang out for the day. I'll take you through what a typical day looks like for me along with exactly what I'm eating. It's important to note that I'm actually getting ready for a competition right now, so I am running a caloric deficit. We'll have to do another video of off-season eating so you can see the difference. I wanted to give a huge thanks to my fiance Evan for not only talking me into doing this video, but for videoing it, editing it, and putting it together like he does with all of the other YouTube videos. Without further ado, let's get this day started. to make some breakfast it's usually the same thing it's cream of rice with some protein mixed in after I heat up the cream of rice so use the uh, trusty kitchen scale just to measure the right amount of water so I usually do 10 ounces or close to 10 ounces and then I measure the uh, Say cream of rice, I use the uh, white rice flour. The cream of rice here has a lot of iron in it and I don't need iron, so. And this is typically cheaper. So I measure right about 50 grams-ish. And now we're off to the races. <laughs> so just because something is healthy or just because I'm dieting doesn't mean that it has to be plain. So I'll add some weird spices. Today we won't, we won't make it too weird. We'll just go with some cayenne because I love spicy spice and some Ceylon cinnamon. Spices are calorie free and don't be afraid of salt either. Is there a reason that you use cream of rice instead of oatmeal? Because I hear a bunch of people that do the oatmeal and protein. Why do you use cream of rice? I like using cream of rice because I digest it a lot easier than oatmeal. I actually had a food sensitivity test done a couple of years ago and found that I'm intolerant to oatmeal. I don't necessarily think food intolerance tests are the most accurate, but typically if you have trouble digesting something if it sits in your stomach or you know if you feel like you just generally don't assimilate it well there are so many different options especially for breakfast that you can try it's thickened up and i'm gonna pour it into the bowl and then mix in the protein and then toss it in the microwave makes kind of a cheesecake consistency and i like something simple like this just carbs and protein easy to digest I'm gonna head to train in about an hour, so I don't want something sitting like a brick in my stomach. And it's funny, since I'm dieting now, I typically will try to get everything out of this pot. Whereas when I was bulking and I was doing 400 carbs a day, this, the amount was like twice of the, I had like twice the amount here and I can barely finish it. I'm using Cellucor. It's their core performance way and it's cinnamon swirl. Goes nicely with the uh, cinnamon that I've added. It's 24 grams per serving, which is two scoops. Whey protein isolate, super quick digesting. The reason I mix it like this is because I want that cream of rice to cool down just a little bit, otherwise, the protein will denature and you'll get weird chunks in it. And that'll happen with any protein. So just go ahead and mix it up until it's an even consistency. And then we'll pop it in the microwave for about a minute and that will set it. I have to lick the spoon to taste test it. Quality control.
So make sure when you're heating this up or cooking it just a little bit more that you keep an eye on it. It has a tendency to really get out of control. Just like anything that you heat up or you cook in the microwave, if you take your eye off of it for too long, it will boil over and then you'll have a mess. You'll be eating your breakfast off of the microwave tray, which, is, <laughs> which I'm not proud to say I've done before. So that's about the time I stop it. You can see it's got a nice jiggly, I say cheesecake like consistency. It's not that much, maybe like a pudding, but the microwave just adds that little extra oomph. So I usually just add some stevia to it. And as I eat it, I may add a little bit as I go. This just gives it a little calorie free sweetness. got a planner but typically before that I've been using notebooks and so this is my planner got a lot to do today I'm gonna go train glutes in about 45 minutes and then I have an online consultation with a client and today is supposed to be progress pictures and videos I just started working with Kim Odo I've never worked with a coach before and since I switched to bikini it's been uh, bikini is something that's outside of my wheelhouse, so I wanted to work with an expert to be my very best in this new division. So I have to send him progress pictures and measurements and videos in a bit. Usually I'll do that first thing in the morning, but I woke up at 6.45 and it was dark out, so I'll do it after training. Definitely not ideal. Typically when you want to take progress pictures, you want to do it first thing in the morning, but will make do. Potato! <laughs> Come on! Good morning! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> what do I do? Come on, let's go! Come on! Bathroom and sniff time. Oh, look, manatees. Oh, really? Yeah. Sea potato and a land potato. He poops so get the treat. Come on. <laughs> Morning cardio. Breakfast is done, the dog's been out. I'm gonna go change and get ready to train. Getting ready to head into MI40 to train legs and glutes. Right now I'm training glutes and legs about three to four times per week. I'm not hitting upper body at all. I'm doing hit once to twice per week and starting to do a little bit of cardio. Coming up on about four weeks out from my first show of the year. So I'm starting to ramp up the intensity just a little bit, cutting calories of course. It's time to get shredded and it's time to train. Let's go. So you said you are training upper body. Why are you not training upper body? I'm in the process still of going from figure to bikini. And for bikini, my upper body now is where it needs to be. If I kept training upper body, I would essentially be too big for bikini again. So just working on glutes, working on legs a little bit, trying to actually downsize my entire body as I get ready for stage. Um, you may or may not know, we have to be really, really lean in order to get on stage. So muscle building is 
definitely over at this point in my training. So I'm just working on burning as many calories as possible with weight training. And this allows me to do less cardio. Cherry, my chicken scratch. <laughs> I don't think it would make sense to anybody except for me. So you always track your workouts? Yeah, for the most part. The I track the heavy, heavy and the uh, fast switch, slow twitch. Not so much a metabolite. Keep track of overall volume, and I want to know how much weight I'm doing. I like to try to increase difficulty each week. Now, with contest prep, I'm just trying to maintain as much strength as possible. So, I'm not going to get stronger, but hopefully be able to lift the same amount of weight, typically just for less reps, because I'm going to be littler and littler. Every time I get on this machine, I typically will pull a little bit on my left side, because my left leg is a bit longer, so I try to compensate and, and make everything feel even. Otherwise, I feel like I'm pulling off to one side. It's definitely good that I'm not a puker because I would be puking today if I was. Today's workout was relatively quick, about 45 minutes, and that's just because I'm going from building or recomping to shredding, and just essentially going from straight sets to supersets. This cuts down on workout time quite a bit. I'm also doing higher frequency, lower volume workouts, so my volume in each workout is less because I'm hitting glutes three to four times per week. This is not how I would have trained for figure, but since I switched to bikini, I want to follow the principles of bodybuilding. So bodybuilding is not 
necessarily what you want to train. Bodybuilding is to achieve a certain look on stage. So I'm looking to the ideal for bikini and trying to match my body to that, understanding that I have a unique build and as does everybody else, just trying to fit the criteria as best as possible. So just having basically one body part to train. So I train glutes, you know, sometimes I'll hit abs and then I hit, and then I do hit once or twice per week doesn't give me a ton of options for training, but I want to be competitive in bikini. So that's what I'm doing. So you're, you're, you're not training your whole lower body, just your glutes. My legs are going to get a little bit of volume just based on the workouts, but my muscle connection wise, I'm focusing on the glutes. The reason I'm not hitting legs directly is because for bikini, they don't want your legs to be big. And honestly, the smaller the legs are within reason, the larger the glutes look. So you want to have that balance from top to bottom. Having super muscly legs would put me in another category, which is wellness. So I'm again trying to fit the criteria and now I'm in the process of actually what they call bringing the legs down or making them smaller and trying to maintain the size on my glutes. Getting ready for a Zoom consultation with a client. Typically people will contact me and they might need help with losing weight, gaining muscle, building a brand, and I offer 30 and 60 minute consultations. So today we're going to help a lady with gaining muscle and losing fat simultaneously, which is of course recomping, and she has some diet concerns. So we'll go through what she's currently eating, make some adjustments, and hopefully get her set up for success. Today's post-workout meal is wild caught salmon and purple sweet potatoes. I always have something healthy in the fridge because I get hungry and I don't want to eat junk. So I'm just going to measure out four ounces of salmon. I typically just eat it cold. Pretty simple. And the potatoes, are those already weighed out or? No, the, the potatoes aren't weighed out. I'll just weigh them out. So I'll zero this out once I hit four ounces for, uh, for the salmon. And then I'll measure six ounces of sweet potato. And this particular salmon is low fat, so it's actually pretty good post-workout. What's the, What do you mean it's low fat salmon? So it's less than five grams per serving. So different salmons have different amount of fats? Yeah, so the wild caught, the coho salmon typically is lower fat. You still get a good amount of healthy fats, but I don't eat the farm raised salmon, which is higher in omega-6, which is potentially can cause inflammation. So like if you've ever been to the store and look at the back of a wild caught salmon bag and then look at the back of a farm raised salmon bag and you'll be shocked at the difference in fat contents. Yeah, it's, all, it's like basically eating an unhealthy stick of butter, the farm raised. So I always opt for the wild caught to try to get it to six ounces. It's pretty close. So I've got everything weighed out and Usually what I'll do is I'll zhuzh the uh, salmon just a little bit with some hot sauce. This is my current favorite. It's like a smoky, smoky chipotle. It's delicious and zero calories per serving. And there's like three ingredients. So it's kind of the best thing ever. A bunch of meats on Blackwing Meats website and they make elk patties and I was buying them at the health food store and they were really expensive so I figured I would get a bulk of them because I eat them all the time and I ended up getting I think ostrich, kangaroo, ground turkey, organic, and pasture-raised chicken. So you said like kangaroo and what? Ostrich and? Kangaroo, ostrich, elk. Why, why that stuff? So I really like wild, wild meats and non-factory farmed meats. So that I've seen a big difference in my physique and how I feel since I stopped getting factory chicken especially. 
It's basically like a corn cob with wings, I think. A lot of them are fed GMO soy, um, and the old phrase, you are what you eat. I, I believe in that. So I wanna try to limit the amount of inflammation that my body takes on, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to get as lean as possible. I want my food to be as clean as possible. We got organic ground turkey, ground ostrich, whole chicken breast. So this has the bone in with the skin on. Lots of flavor. You'll pull that off though, right? Of course. But I like to cook it like that because it helps keep the uh, chicken breast a little bit So more. you cook it with the, the bone in and the skin on, but then you take the, the skin off. Yes. After you're done. Okay. Yep. Kangaroo boneless leg burgers, super lean, and 40 elk patties. Since I'm coming up to four weeks to my show, I will typically take progress pictures every single week. Now that I'm working with Kim, I take those progress pictures and I also do posing videos to send to him and we'll make adjustments from there. Ideally, I would do this first thing in the morning, not after a couple of meals, but the lighting's better now and it is what it is. So what I'll do is I set the camera at about the same distance each time, try to make sure these lights are on, try to make sure it's the same amount of light outside, and I'll just see how the posing goes. Basically for bikini, for progress pictures, it's just the front pose and the back pose. And then of course we'll go through a quick routine afterwards. So I'll take probably four to five different pictures of the front pose, same with the back pose, and then I'll choose the best one to send. Since the last meal, I've been working on a couple of presentations that I'm doing for a seminar this weekend, so it's been pretty busy. This meal is four ounces of grouper and two Smart Pop bags of popcorn, so it's 200 calories, about 46 grams of carbs. This right now is my guilty pleasure, and I probably won't be able to continue eating it for much longer but it currently fits my macros and I'm still making progress, so I'll keep it in until I need to take it out. Before, when I was talking about always having something healthy in the fridge that I can depend on, I am pretty much on a structured plan. So I'm eating four times a day, I know what my macros are. If I don't have something healthy in the fridge, I do have protein powder, I do have canned food, but I'd rather rely on something fresh. So that's just what I meant by that, but everything is very structured right now. I am counting calories, counting macros, and um, I just prefer to have fresh food if possible. So when you said earlier, you know, I keep, I keep healthy food in the fridge so I don't eat junk. Like if you're hungry right now, do you just go in the fridge and grab something to eat? No, I eat every three to four hours. So I'm definitely on a plan. And for me, junk is probably like canned food or, you know, it's still going to fit my macros, but it's not going to be something optimal. I didn't mean I would go eat a cheeseburger or I would go eat, you know, something else. I am definitely on a plan. Okay, but it, like, say right now, say, you know, an hour from now, you're hungry. What do you do? <laughs> As my grandma would say, tough titties. <laughs> if I'm hungry, it doesn't matter. Um, that's why I love carbonated water with a little bit of stevia in it. The carbonation kind of fills me up and um, I'm dieting. So I'm going to be hungry. It's part of it. And typically with hunger, it comes and goes. So understanding... Um, leptin and, and understanding um, ghrelin, hunger hormones, it goes in waves. 
So it's pretty common, me eating every three to four hours, that I will get hungry about 15 to 30 minutes before my next meal. Of course, sometimes sooner, especially if it's been a hard workout, but um, I understand how the body works. And if you're dieting, that can be helpful just to know that you will be hungry, drink water, feelings of hunger will definitely pass. It's about five o'clock and every day we take Ari, AKA Potato, AKA Muscle Beach on a little walk. And I think he enjoys it quite a bit. It's good to keep the activity level up. I've been sitting at my desk for most of the day, it feels like, so gotta get some blood pumping and burn some calories. Most of you have seen my YouTube videos and you've probably seen the trophy case in the back. I thought it would be fun to go over some of the major victories. I am a professional bodybuilder and bodybuilding doesn't necessarily mean big and jacked. Um, obviously I'm not big and jacked. I competed in figure and I'm currently competing in bikini which is a division that has a little bit less muscle that's why I'm in the process of changing my body but in figure I've won figure Olympia twice and that's basically the Super Bowl of bodybuilding it's the same award that Arnold won in his division so these are two trophies and medals that I'm very proud of I've been runner-up at Olympia two times the two silvers here. So when you win Olympia, you actually win these and they're very heavy. And one year they handed out a large gold medal along with a smaller one. And then in 2012, it was the trophy and the medal. And my second proudest moment other than the two Olympias would be the Arnold Classic in Madrid. I got to shake Arnold's hand. It was actually my third show so i won olympia and i traveled to india i won the new delhi show and then i traveled to madrid and i won that so i won three shows in three weeks and i'm pretty proud of that but i've also won shows in australia new zealand all over the world so um, it's been a really fantastic journey and one that I'm excited to hopefully continue in bikini. And then up top, I have some of my magazine covers. I've actually been on over 20 magazine covers and I don't have them all framed. I have some on the floor down there, but I uh, don't have wall space. So working on finishing up the office. And then of course, the YouTube plaque for reaching 100,000 subscribers, which we're over that now. Dinner is a bit of a melange of things. So I've got some salmon and grouper. I actually ran out of salmon, so I had to add some grouper. Two ounces of purple sweet potato. I typically don't do carbs at dinner, but I found that I wasn't dropping any weight for a number of days. So I decided to decrease the fats at dinner just a little bit, add just a small amount of carbs, and that did the trick. So to the left of the sweet potato is Brazil nuts. They're really high in selenium, high in good fats. I like to have fats later in the day away from training. And of course, a good bowl of broccoli. I don't measure the broccoli. Um, a cup is like 25 calories and it usually takes the body about the same number of calories just to digest it. This is my absolute favorite seasoning right now. 
it's perfect on vegetables and it's just basically pepper and lime and some salt. This is the last meal of the day. Typically I follow time-restricted feeding, so I'll eat within a 12-hour eating window. So I start somewhere around seven o'clock in the morning and finish eating up about seven o'clock at night. Would you like some dinner? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Do you want some dinner? He's very hungry. Are you hungry? Huh? What a cool baby. Come get your dinner. He's like, don't touch me. I like to fake out. He like went to go and he stopped. This meal is not for me. This is the last meal and it's for Evan. He's actually bulking now, so he needs to get as many calories, well, clean-ish calories as possible. So I'm making him banana pancakes. Thanks for watching this day in a life slash full day of eating and hanging out with me. Until next time, train hard y'all.